Febrile seizures are common in young children. These seizures occur in children aged 6 months through 60 months. A febrile seizure is defined as a seizure accompanied by a fever of at least 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit or 38 degrees Celsius without central nervous system infection. Caregivers often perceive these events as life-threatening. Febrile seizures are a frequent reason for emergency department visits. Epidemiology. The incidence of febrile seizures in the United States and Western Europe is estimated to be between 2% and 5%. Some Asian populations show a higher incidence of 8% to 10%. The peak incidence of a first febrile seizure is in the second year of life. Approximately 90% of children experience their first febrile seizure by the age of three years. Febrile seizures occur most often in the winter months. Recurrence of a single febrile seizure is a risk. Etiology. Genetic factors contribute to febrile seizures. Approximately one-third to one-half of children with febrile seizures have a family history. Common viral infections associated with febrile seizures include influenza, adenovirus, parinfluenza, and herpesvirus 6. Otitis media is the most common bacterial cause. Certain vaccines, such as those containing measles, combined diphtheria tetanus toxoids pertussis, pneumococcal conjugate vaccine 13, and influenza vaccines may be followed by febrile seizures. The height of the fever is a main influencing factor. The risk of having a febrile seizure nearly doubles with each increase in degrees Fahrenheit above 101 degrees Fahrenheit. Clinical manifestations. Febrile seizures typically occur within the first 24 hours of an illness, often within one hour of fever onset. In 25% to 50% of cases, the seizure is the first sign of a febrile illness. The average duration is 4 to 7 minutes, with only 10% to 15% lasting longer than 10 minutes. Patients typically have a high fever, with an average of 39.4 degrees Celsius in one study. Signs include loss of consciousness, irregular breathing, pallor or cyanosis, foaming at the mouth, eyes rolling back or fixed gaze, generalized or focal twitching, and jerking of the extremities. Postictal period of drowsiness, fussiness, or confusion may last up to 30 minutes. Postictal palsy, also known as Todd's paralysis, may occur. Classifications. Febrile seizures are classified as simple, complex, and febrile status epilepticus based on duration, the presence of focal features, and recurrence. Approximately 70% of febrile seizures are simple, 25% are complex, and 5% are classified as febrile status epilepticus. Febrile status epilepticus is defined as seizures lasting more than 30 minutes or brief serial seizures without consciousness being regained during the interictal periods with a total duration of more than 30 minutes. Simple febrile seizures are generalized without focal features, last less than 15 minutes, and do not recur within 24 hours in individuals with no pre-existing neurologic abnormality. Complex febrile seizures have focal features, last more than 15 minutes, or less than 15 minutes but stopped with anticonvulsant medication, recur within 24 hours, or occur in children with a pre-existing neurologic abnormality or postictal neurologic abnormality. Febrile status epilepticus is the most common cause of status epilepticus in children. Evaluation. Evaluation should begin with a history and physical examination to determine the cause of the fever. Key historical features include a description of the seizure and its duration, recent illnesses or antibiotic use within 48 hours, personal or family history of seizures or epilepsy, and recent vaccinations. Physical examination should look for signs of meningitis. A finger stick glucose level should be assessed. Routine laboratory studies are not necessary for simple febrile seizures. Further laboratory testing should be individualized. Neuroimaging. Routine neuroimaging is not recommended for simple febrile seizures. Neuroimaging may be reasonable in febrile seizure patients with a postictal neurologic deficit. Magnetic resonance imaging after febrile status epilepticus may predict future epilepsy but is not required on an emergency basis. Lumbar puncture. 
Lumbar puncture is indicated in any child with physical examination findings suggestive of meningitis. It is an option for children between 6 and 12 months old with unknown or incomplete immunization status for Haemophilus influenza type B and Streptococcus pneumoniae. And in children on antibiotics, lumbar puncture may be considered in complex febrile seizures if the child is under 12 months of age or if the clinical examination suggests meningitis. Lumbar puncture is recommended for all children with febrile status epilepticus due to a higher risk of meningitis, with rates of 12% and 17% in studies. Management. Most febrile seizures resolve spontaneously before reaching the emergency department. For ongoing tonic-clonic seizures lasting more than 5 minutes, an anticonvulsant drug should be administered. Treatment of febrile status epilepticus follows the same protocol as non-febrile status epilepticus. Intravenous lorazepam at 0.1 mg per kilogram with a maximum dose of 4 mg and diazepam at 0.2 mg per kilogram with a maximum dose of 10 mg have similar rates of seizure cessation. If intravenous access is unavailable, midazolam at 0.3 to 0.5 mg per kilogram buccally, 0.2 mg per kilogram intranasally, or 0.1 to 0.2 mg per kilogram intramuscularly, with a maximum dose of 10 mg, or diazepam at 0.5 mg per kilogram buccally, 0.2 mg per kilogram intranasally, or 0.5 mg per kilogram rectally, with a maximum dose of 20 mg are alternatives. Repeat doses of benzodiazepines can be given after 5 minutes for febrile status epilepticus. Second-line medications such as levetiracetam at 60 mg per kilogram intravenously, with a maximum dose of 4,500 mg, phosphonatoin at 20 mg phenytoin equivalents intravenously, with a maximum dose of 1,500 mg, valproate at 20 to 40 mg per kilogram intravenously, or phenobarbital at 20 mg per kilogram intravenously, with a maximum dose of 1 gram, may be needed. Prevention. Continuous treatment with phenobarbital and intermittent treatment with diazepam can reduce febrile seizure recurrence but have adverse effects in up to 30% of cases. The American Academy of Pediatrics advises against routine prophylactic anti-seizure medication. Antipyretics may improve comfort but do not prevent febrile seizures. Studies evaluating prophylactic antipyretics have not supported their use in preventing recurrence. Neurologic sequelae. Population-based studies have not shown a clear association between simple or complex febrile seizures or status epilepticus and later neurologic or cognitive defects. Risk of recurrence. Approximately one-third of children with one febrile seizure will have another episode. Age at the first febrile seizure is the most important factor for recurrence. Recurrence rates can be as high as 50% in patients younger than one year and around 20% in those older than three years at the time of the first seizure. Other risk factors include age younger than 18 months, seizure within one hour of fever onset, seizure with a relatively low-grade fever, and a family history of febrile seizures. A history of two simple febrile seizures within 24 hours with return to baseline in between may warrant a longer observation period. Risk of epilepsy. The risk of future epilepsy after simple febrile seizures is 1% to 2%, compared to approximately 0.5% in children without febrile seizures. Children with complex febrile seizures have a higher risk of 6% to 8%. Risk factors for epilepsy after a febrile seizure include complex febrile seizure, seizure within one hour of fever onset, age older than three years at the first seizure, pre-existing neurodevelopmental abnormality, and a family history of epilepsy. Indications for admission. Most children with febrile seizures do not require hospital admission. Discharge is safe after a period of observation if the child returns to their neurologic baseline, typically two to four hours or potentially longer in specific situations. Hospitalization solely for parental reassurance is not beneficial. All children undergoing lumbar puncture in the emergency department should be admitted. Conclusion. Febrile seizures are the most common type of seizure in preschool age children. Understanding the classification of febrile seizures guides management and prognosis. The introduction of vaccines against Haemophilus influenza type B and Streptococcus pneumoniae 
has significantly altered the evaluation needed for children with febrile seizures. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscription button. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below in the comment section.